Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, I jollipized for my tardiness. I was, um, as some of you may know, I, uh, I was in, in a wedding yesterday. Uh, a good friend of mine, like one of my little brothers, I was in his, uh, it was, it's a vow renewal. They 20 year anniversary. They did a vow renewal. And um, he had called me. And we was on the phone running out of mouth. <laughs> we was on the phone running out of mouth and all like man, because we were, I was I was probably been helping him do some stuff this morning, like some extra cleaning up. And then we was playing phone tag. And by the time we got in touch, he was already straight. But um man, welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time tuning in to Tim's tidbits. Allow me to say, welcome. Y'all remember when I used to do that? Y'all remember when I used to do that right now? If this is not your first time tuning in to Tim's tidbit, I still want to say, welcome. And give you a nice hearty, well, thank you, for always tuning in to Tim's tidbits. Yeah, who remember that? I know OG Gang Gang remember that. I know OG Gang Gang remember that. Uh, today, um, as I was uh, coming back from dropping off the boys at school i had a, a thought that's me thinking i had a thought the other day somebody i can't remember if it was a a channel member or just somebody on the live stream but they were they were talking about they were like man i have trouble like seeing the breakers in real time you know and i was like breakers are more of a of a hindsight thing breakers are more of a hindsight thing but you can anticipate well really all of the pda rays are a hindsight thing but you can anticipate them forming and in in your anticipation of them forming that is what helps you decide your entry price you know, you have you'll have your let's get right into wait a minute. I ain't said what's up to nobody yet before we get into the charts. Let me see who in here. Rhonda Green. I don't know if she's still in here. Uh finding Superman, Seawalk, Lavern, Louis in here, FC Buenas Diaz, Valdez, Buenas Diaz. Here to learn is Shell, Sanjay. Hey. What's going on, everybody? So, um, get out of the way, Tim. So, first of all, let's get the noty note notes for the note takers. All right, first of all, first things first, I'm the realist. All right. First of all, let me move this stuff out the way. Blank, blank, the blank screen. So, did I not just move that stuff out of the way? I did. So, what is this? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> first of all, uh, you want to have one, you want to understand the narrative, understand the narrative. Now, nah. Narrative. Did I spell that right? Nope. Tore that up. Should have been an A, not an I. Understand the narrative. All right. Then you want to see what the um bias is. The current, like the current bias. Identify, 
ident identify current bias. All right. Let's go back here. So under the narrative, under the narrative, we gonna have that is our order flow. Right. The narrative, that's our order flow. Identify the current bias. <clears throat> and then um then you start to anticipate anticipate um PD arrays PD arrays forming right not and not just forming this is an important part forming i'm put these in parentheses to that support the narrative or order flow now and how do and what is that what is that supporting the order flow right focus no let's do this right here pd arrays forming and then let's do this right here let's do this right here let's do it to make it make sense focus on PD arrays that support the narrative only. Okay. So now that we got all of that right there, that's for the noty note takers, right? So again, for anybody who popped in. We talk about how to see ICT PD arrays in real time, right? It starts, it don't start with just jumping in and look at the candles. It starts with, right? I mean, it don't just start with, let me go try to find find a breaker, find a favorite, I got find. It don't start there. It starts with understanding the narrative, order flow, right? And we're going to get into that. Once... You identify the order flow. You want to look at, you want to identify the current bias, right? The current bias. And then you want to start to anticipate PD arrays forming, right? And then we're going to get into how you anticipate that. And then you want to focus on the PD arrays that support the order flow only. Don't get tricked by the the speed bumps don't get tricked by don't get tricked okay now order one order flow um you want your order flow to come from the higher time frames right the daily the four hour hourly even you want to get your order flow from the the monthly the monthly and 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 if you only trade with the order flow those will be the safest the most lucrative trades that you take but sometimes depending on the order flow you're trading with like the daily the monthly sometimes it will you will trade a lot less you will trade a lot less shout out michelle She's seeing that in real time right now because she's trading off of the the weekly and the daily order flow. Really, she's trading off the weekly order flow because she's trying to get a daily entry. Really, she's trading off the monthly order flow if she's trying to get a daily entry. But it's been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and her setup has not panned out. 
But when you think when you when you think about it, if you swing trade something, I done got distracted now. If you think about it, right? If your entry, if you was on a monthly chart. Right. If you were on a monthly chart and your setup was um, get a break in market structure and come back to a breaker. Right. So we had a break in market structure right there when we went up here. Right. And then we come back down to a breaker. Right. Come back down to the breaker. That's your breaker right there. Got a break in market structure. Come back down to a breaker. All right, and we look for an entry on the daily time frame. Like we look at monthly levels, All right? So we got monthly levels, and we're entering. We look for our entry two time frames down, right? But we entering based off the higher time frame, right? We gonna get into it, and I didn't got distracted. I'm sorry, I didn't got distracted. If, if y'all ain't used to me getting distracted by now. If you don't know Tim by now, you will never, never, never know him. Now, with all these things that we've been through, okay, so these are the monthly levels, the monthly chart right here, right here is when the monthly came into. I mean, on the monthly chart, this is when we came into that breaker. Remember, that's the breaker line. So on daily candles, we came down into this breaker right here, right? This is where you you going, you right there. See, on the daily right there, when we hit that monthly breaker, you went in on October 23rd. If your higher time frame was the monthly and you was looking for entries on the daily. So on October 23rd, you went in. But you would have to have been waiting on, let's say, see what it is, October 23rd. Y'all remember that date? October 23rd. Remember that date. All right. So let's go back to the monthly. I'm going to get to what I'm talking about in a minute. I'm sidetracked. All right, I done got off on this. I got to finish this thought. Okay. So on the monthly chart, right? On the monthly, and this tied to what we talk about too. We we talk about PD arrays on the monthly chart, right? The narrative is the order flow has turned bullish, right? Oh, look how look at God, look how God brought this together. I got side. I thought I got sidetracked. Uh, I'm fun to go into a preach. I'm fun to hoop. Uh, I thought I got sidetracked uh, when I was sitting there and I had a thought. Uh, but it really was the Holy Spirit uh, that came into me uh, and it said, uh, Tim, uh, talk about Michelle. Uh, and I talked about Michelle. Uh, and then now. <laughs> but look, but look, but look, look how it came together. Look how it came together. Right. Narrative bias. Start to anticipate the PD rays. Focus on the ones that support the narrative. Look how it came together. Right. So October 23rd, remember that date, right? October 23rd, right? So we came up these monthly calendars right here. So in the month of June, 2023, in the month of June, 2023, we took out this high, right? We took out this high. We started, ex well, we started expanding in June. We started expanding in June and we took out, the um August high giving us a break in market structure, right? Giving us a break in market structure. In July, we continued up creating a monthly fair value gap, giving us identifying this as legitimate displacement because we expanded with a fair value gap. That lets us know this is legitimate displacement. The market is displacing higher. The market is showing a willingness to go higher, right? Institutional order flow is present because we've expanded with displacement and left an imbalance, right? So the order flow has turned bullish. We understand the narrative now. It's bullish right here. This breaker. 
once we now let's go find a day we cross this high right here let's find a day we cross that high so the day that we crossed that high was june 13th i'm gonna lose these dates let's do this right here i'm gonna lose these dates somebody keep somebody keep the dates for me because i don't want to keep moving this around june somebody put in the chat june 13th we created the breaker october what was it october 23rd we retrace back to no 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 yes 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 because we took the high out we took the high out june 13th we created the breaker because we took out the high and i'm gonna throw you for a loop in a second on creating that breaker another anticipatory skill and then october 23rd we traded back into the breaker um okay so now let me throw you for a loop here if right if you are really in tune with the with the um algorithm and you see all this back and forth down here and you say hey this is this is is about a potential balance price range after we made this you see this long candle right here we wicked up and came back down right we wicked up and came back down and then we came down here and created this swing high right now that we've created that swing high right there and there's no other green camp let me turn on my fancy dancing this june candle and this july i mean this july candle and this august candle how the august candle wick down and then the uh, September candle, we created this swing high right here, and there's no other green candle up here. Once we came down and took out this low right there, and we do once we see like we came here, we came down, took out that low. Once we started doing all this chopping right here, and you anticipating this to be a balanced price range right here on this February 23rd candle, once we poked above the high of this july candle you can start to anticipate this to be a breaker already why is that because you've broken past the high of the last up close candle in this run right here from this june low to this august high you've broken past the high of the last up close candle in that price leg so you can already start to anticipate this as being a breaker let's get our anticipation date right let's look at the day so we're going to put a line here we we broke it and this month so we're going to look inside that month right there to see the day that we this inside february so we're going to look inside february to see the day that we broke that high right so let's go to the daily. So this line is the beginning of February. Right at the beginning of February. So on February 1st, February 1st, we broke that high. So February 1st would be the somebody write this down in the chat for me. I appreciate that. Um J Rock. I appreciate that. Somebody write this in the chat for me. For me. On February 1st, we can start to anticipate. We can start to anticipate the July 2022 candle being a monthly breaker. And why is that? Let's say it again. From the June low up to the August high, this July 2022 candle is the last up close candle in this price leg, right? After that, we came down and we took out the low. Now, mind you, let's get it all in. All, so from 
this high here of um, January 2022, we came down and we took out sell side. We retraced back up, right, into this um, bearish order block right here on the March 2022 candle. That's on the retrace back up. So we took out low. We came to an anticipatory reactionary point. We came to a place of anticipated support, which was this low. We came to an anticipatory reactionary point. Hey, Siri, spell and oh, I'm on live, so it's not going to do it. We came to a level. Let me see. Anticipated. Anticipated. Support. Right. We came to a we came to an anticipatory reactionary point point. Right. So we came to an area of anticipatory reactionary. Boom. That's requirement number one of forming a breaker, an order block, a mitigation block. That's step number one. You come to an area of anticipated support or resistance. We did that. Right. And then from the June low we was talking about, we retrace back up into this price leg because we came to an area of anticipated support, took out sell side right there on this um May candle. Boom, took it out. June candle. Boom, took out the sell side again, went below that low. August, I mean, July candle, retrace, started retracing back into the range, hit the um, volume imbalance, the August candle. Retrace back up into the order block, right? Retrace back up into the order block and then came back down and took out the sell side again. So now we've come to an area of support, retraced back into it, took care of all of the monthly imbalances, came back down and took out sell side, right? And then we started to chop. So now this is an area of support. Then this high took out that low so you have a low a high and a lower low right you're anticipating a breaker now this you're anticipate you're starting to anticipate a breaker let's see the day we took out this low it's a lot of anticipating i know y'all probably said tim how much anticipating you gonna do i'm gonna do a lot i'm gonna do a lot Right. So let's see the day that we took out this low. It's a lot of anticipating. That's why I told y'all to write it in the chat for me. It's so much. It's so much. We can't even see it on the current contract. We can't even see it on the current contract. It's so it's so far back we can't even see it on the current contract. So we're just gonna pick a day that's because the current contract is is too spotty. It's too sp let's look at the uh Okay, so let's look at this. Look at the contract back here and see. Okay, that is on. September 27th, 2022. September 27th, 2022. Is when we took out that when we made that lower low. So September 27th, 2022 is when we made the lower low. I'll see all the anticipation. 
It ain't just that simple. So right here in the month of September, right here, when we made this lower low, we made that lower low on September 22nd, right? So that's 2022, right? And so in when we when we traded past the um the high, what was that? We created the breaker here because we traded past the high of the leg. That's the official creation of the breaker, right? Over here in the June candle on, on June 13th, we created the breaker. That's the official creation because we broke the high. But when we talk about anticipatory, right, we anticipate in it, we made a low after coming to an area of support. We made a high when we retraced back into the area, you know, say taking out buy side, retracing back into the area, coming to a monthly PD array in the premium, right? We've come into a monthly PD array. We've taken out buy side, right? See a wick. We've taken our buy side, came to a monthly PD array, and then we came back down and created a lower low on September. What day did I just say? I'll be telling y'all to put it in the chat for me. I'll put it in the chat for me. Uh, J Rock was holding me down. That's how I'm getting. I don't just remember these dates. I'm looking over that what J Rock typed for me. September 27th, 2022. Right, so September 27th, I'm going somewhere with this. Y'all like, Tim, where you going with this? I'm showing you how long this stuff takes sometimes. So September September 22nd, 2022 is when we created, I mean, when we made the lower low. So now, the formation, the, the, the formation of a breaker begins the formation of a breaker is that when you make a low, uh, and this is a bullish breaker, bearish breaker, just flip it over. A bullish breaker is you make a low when you come to an area of anticipated support, you retrace back into the area, making a high and hitting a high, a, a premium PD array, taking out buy side, and then coming back down and making a lower low. Right. And then once you make that lower low, once you make a higher high, the breaker is formed. Because remember, we said we formed the breaker on October 23rd, 2023, because we made a low, a high, a lower low. And then we made a higher high above that right there. So the breaker was formed on October 23rd, 2023. But back on. September 27th, 2022, when you made this lower low, you can start to anticipate this July candle to be a breaker. Why can you start to anticipate that? Because we've come to an area of anticipated support, made a low, took out sales side, retraced back into the, <clears throat> the area, I mean, back into the range. Took out buy side, took care of all of the imbalances. There's your imbalance there. Traded to a P premium PD array, right? And then came back down and made a lower low on September 27, 2022. That's the day when you can anticipate this July candle to be a breaker. Now you're just anticipating it right now, right? You're anticipating it to be a breaker. And then on um what day what day was this right here nobody gave me a new date now i got to go back and look for the date again the date that we crossed this high i asked somebody to put that in the chat for me y'all ain't do it y'all let me down set the first february 1st i remember because we went in so on february 1st 2023 right if you're connected with the algorithm on the, when you trade above the high of that July candle, 
now in your mind, well, actually, when you trade above the closing price of this July candle, but when you trade above the high of that July candle right there on February 1st, in your mind, you could say, we just created this breaker. It hasn't officially been created because we haven't taken out the high of that price leg. But you see that this is the last up close candle in this price leg. So there's no other up close candle on this time frame. Now you can say we just created that monthly breaker right there. So now if you're really into it, you've been watching price this long, you can start realistically looking for entry long right after this. If you, you know what I'm saying, if you're an aggressive trader, if you're in tune with it, if you just trust the narrative, right, you can start looking for your entry after this on your lower time frames. This is the monthly. So on the daily time frame, you want to go two time frames down on a daily time frame. You can start looking for a, a entry um, after that. So looking at how price trades, you probably could have found an entry in March. Sometime you could have found an entry in March because you were anticipating this to become a breaker. Right now, let's just say that's too aggressive for you. Here in June, once we what we said. It's not June. Yeah, June. June 13th and June 13th, once we created this breaker. Right. You start looking for your um entry PDA rays. You start and, and if there's no entry PDA ray created for you yet, as like here, there's no entry PDA ray created yet in June, right? Then when you come here to July, now you see we have a monthly fair value gap, right? And everybody that's true gang gang, y'all remember this because we was talking about all this. This was the monthly fair value gap we was watching. This was the order block we was watching. Once we made this monthly fair value gap, that gave us an order block right here. That gave us an order block hit like all of this right here. Did, did, you know what I'm saying? We got us an order block. We got us a breaker. You know what I'm saying? Because this right here is your, if you don't know how to identify order block, identifying the order block coming out of the consolidation, right? If you're in the consolidation, when you start to expand up, you just the, the order block is going to be at or near equilibrium. This last down close candle right here is going to be at or near equilibrium of the consolidation, right? All right, so get on there. We go to the consolidation period, looking at like all this is the consolidation period right here, right there. We're consolidating here, right? And then if we put, oh, look at that. Look at that. This low is right at the. Because I was about to put the line on there, but the anticipated support line is already at the equilibrium of the box. And then that's the last down close candle at equilibrium. So that's your order block right there. When you get the expansion with displacement, the last down close candle has got to be more careful. Here we go with the internet. Are y'all back? Can y'all see me? Here we go. The freaking internet, man. My internet been acting so crazy for the last few days. Can y'all see me? Somebody put a one in the chat if you can see me. Freaking internet, man. All right. Appreciate that, Seawalk. So, there we go. We got our fair value gap. We got our order block, right? So, looking at this price leg right here. Now, focus on the PD arrays that support the narrative only. Let me get all this stuff off here. We 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 done went through all that. Y'all see how I, I, I y'all see how I just got off track, but then me getting off track was right where I needed to be. Look at God. Okay, so focus on the PD arrays that support the narrative only. So we've chopped around here, consolidated. We expanded with displacement from here, 
right? We're anticipating this to be a balanced price range, right? So we look at the last price leg, right? This is the price leg right here. That's the price leg right there. Now, focus on PD arrays that support the narrative only. Let's do this right here so that we can see it. Boom. Right? So we went up and we're coming down. Focus on PD arrays that support the narrative only. We have a fair value gap here. We have an order block here. Make this orange. Oh, that was the text. Sorry. Make this orange. Fair value gap. I'll just make it green since it's bullish. And then we have our breaker that we've been talking about. Breaker. Since the breaker, let's just make it blue so we can easily identify the three different ones. I keep clicking on the text. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. What? somebody? We fun to make this part interactive because I want to drink some water. Somebody put in the chat which PD arrays support the narrative, support the order flow, support what we're trying to do. Which PD array supports that? Is it the fair value gap? Is it the order block? Is it the breaker? You can't have more than one PD array that supports narrative. Don't be afraid if you feel like it's more than one, if you feel like it's one, if you feel like it's none. But which PD array supports the narrative? FVG for fair, fair value gap. OB for order block. BRKR for breaker. Which one supports the narrative of what we're trying to do? I'm going to drink me some water. Mind you now, we're looking for something that supports and if if you if you haven't got it clear, it's a bullish narrative. Order flow is bullish, right? It's a bullish narrative, order flow is bullish. And so we're looking for something that supports bullish order flow and bullish narrative like that. And when I say support, we're and we're anticipating it to do its job. We're anticipating that it will not fail and it will do its job. That's what I, what I mean when I say support the narrative, right? Some stuff, man, when I said don't get tricked by the speed bumps. Remember when I said, I said, don't get tricked by the speed bumps. And if we are buyers, what PD arrays support the narrative? If we are bullish, what PD arrays support the narrative? If we are bearish, what PD arrays support the narrative? You know what I'm saying? And when I say support, I mean, when we're bullish, we want to what? Buy where? If we're bearish, we want to what? Sell where? So if it supports that narrative, where should they reside? Where the money reside? Where the money reside? Where the money reside? Where should they reside? This is all the stuff you think. This is all the stuff you think. Um, Fair value gap. No, it does not support our narrative. Why? It's in the premium. It's in the premium. You can you look and say, Tim, look, it hit it, and then we went up. We are looking at monthly charts. We're looking at monthly charts. We don't want a little move. We want stuff that's going to support us back to buy side. We want to buy in a discount and attack buy side, meaning we want to go take out a high on the level that we're looking at. 
We want to take out a monthly high. We don't want to get in here and go back up to there. Take out monthly highs. This PD array is in the premium. It does not support our narrative. Our narrative is bullish. We need PD arrays that support a bullish narrative. All three. All three. The first part of your statement is true. The second part, not so much. All three supports the narrative because the fair value gap, that lets you know that the narrative was officially bullish. Once we got this breaking market structure with the fair value gap, that's displacement. So it, it supports the narrative right of anticipating it to be bullish but it does not support the narrative as far as defending the bullishness right we want this to fail this is a part of the narrative but we want this to fail we don't want it to support the narrative why because we want to buy in the discount we, we want this to fail because it's in the premium. If this, if this holds up, right? If this holds up and takes us back up to a high, right? Then we looking at too big of a time frame, and the, the algorithm is only looking at that piece of the time frame. And right here, when it came back into that slight discount and pushed back up, at this point, at that point in time, the algorithm was only operating on this portion of the price leg because it came back down just below equilibrium and then pushed back up. But that's not the completed story. That's not the story that we want, right? The story that we want is from the entire price leg we wanted to come back into a discount so that we can buy to come take out highs right um order block order block is in the discount of the move that supports what we want we want it to come to the discount breaker the breaker is in the discount of the move that supports what we want we got a bullish narrative so now we want a retracement back into the range in the discount just like over here there was a bearish narrative so we was looking for a retracement back into the range in the premium right let me show you this high came down made a low that order block is in the premium so we got a retracement back into the premium and once we hit that premium what did we do we came down and took out the sale side on this time frame right we didn't come down and just stop here and then go back up we came back to the premium and we came in we took out sale side right so over here we want it to be in the discount right the fair value gap, we want that to fail. It's in the premium. We want it to fail, right? The fair value gap, EC. I, I don't know what EC is. Are you, do you mean CE, consequent encroachment? Do you mean CE, consequent encroachment? Breaker in the order block. Yes, they're in the discount. We looking for... We focus on the PD arrays that support the narrative only. We want this to fail. We anticipate we can get day trades in here. You, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with getting day trades in here. We're talking about this long. Right now, we on the monthly chart, so we're looking at longer term stuff. But everything is fractal. Take it down. All right. Now. Now we got that. We hammered that to death. Right. We hammered that to death. get this out of here All right we've hammered that to death so now 
You see, we come back down. We retrace back down where? Into, now, everybody, true gang gang, y'all remember this. We were watching this. We we were we were watching this as this was playing out. We were saying, remember, we was like, we want to see how the monthly, weekly candles react to these PD arrays. We talked about this in real time. This is all stuff we taught. True gang gang, y'all know new people that's here. You probably you probably look like, hey, yeah, it's easy to look back and say this stuff now. But true gang gang, y'all know we walk through this. We walk through this every single day. This back when we was going hard on the, the live streams. Every day we was looking at these candles. Every day we want to see how this react. We want to see how this react. We want to, cause y'all remember, and when, um, what was it? October, like the last day of October, we popped back up and we closed above the um opening price of the order block, and we was like, hey, we respect in the order block. And then November we went crazy. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Came down, um, came into the order block. Then you say, hey, we want to see how this time frame closes in reference to these discount PD arrays, right? So as you come down, right, you want to find your entry around that. that. We ain't going to get into entries and all of that, but pretty much that's it. I, I do this stuff off the top of my head, but that's it. You understand the order flow, understand the narrative, you got the narrative, identify the current bias we ain't talk about the current bias in there but i don't feel like going back into that start anticipating the pd oh let's talk about that how do you anticipate the pd we talked about it on the breaker right the breaker starts with the low the high the lower low we talked about how you can anticipate it being formed we we, we did it with the breaker now a order block would be pretty much like the breaker you come to an area of anticipated support right and then once you start getting the expansion once you break the um the opening price of the of the um candle last down close for um bullish last up close for bearish you um start looking you want to see the displacement you want to see the fair value gap once you see the displacement you can start anticipating it to be an order block once you break that opening price, but you're waiting to see the fair value gap, the displacement to say, okay, that is an order block. Just like with the breaker, you anticipating it to be a breaker once you see the low, the high, the lower low, once you break that price, you know, or break that high, once you break that price, you still anticipating us give you more once you break that high, that is a breaker. Right. With a fair value gap, the fair value gaps are a little easier to see for me. Right. But anticipating it on a fair value gap, looking at this candle here, this May candle went the high of this candle here. Is there at forty three twenty eight when you get this large move up or large move down when this candle closes, the opening of this candle is above the high. The opening of this July candle is above the high of the May candle. You can start to anticipate this June to be a busy, a fair value gap. Unless this candle trades all the way back down to this high, that's going to be a busy. No matter if it trades way down here and stop five ticks away, that's a five tick busy. So that's how you can anticipate this fair value gap to be forming. And with that, I yield my time. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. Hopefully it made sense. Um, I'll be doing it. I'll be freestyling it off the dome. But this is how to anticipate. I mean, this is how to see ICT uh, PD arrays in real time. And like I say, everything is fractal. We looked at monthly PD arrays and I, I do the two time frame down technique. So the P, the 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 PD arrays I'm trying to trade off of is on the higher time frame, and I'm going two time frames down to look for entry. So monthly PD arrays that I want to trade off of, I'm looking on daily charts to make an entry. Daily PD arrays I'm trying to trade off on, I'm looking at hourly charts to make an entry. Four hour. 
I'm looking at 15 minutes. One hour, I'm looking at five minutes. Let me see. 15, five, five minutes. 15 minutes, I'm looking at one minute. Y'all get the picture. Two time frames down. I'm looking two time frames down to make my entry on the higher time frame. So, example, I want to make an entry on this monthly order block right here. Monthly order block. I want to make an entry on the daily. I will be looking on the. What happened? How did everything disappear? It's not on all the time frame. See, it be this thing. It remember what I did last time, so it be making stuff disappear. Well, not disappear, but it be remembering the last thing I did. Okay, so I want to enter. Go back. You put a line there when I first touched it. We're coming down here. I want to enter on that monthly order block. All right. So if I put a line at the beginning of that month, now let's see what day I would be entering on. So I go my daily charts, right? <clears throat> so I would have entered on October 26th. October 26th is the date. So on the monthly chart, on the monthly chart, I got my um, narrative down. I got my narrative down on the monthly chart and I say, hey, I am a order block trader. I'm going to enter when price hits this order block and my stop loss is going to be below this low. Right? When we hit this order block, my stop loss is going to be below this low. Let's just put it at the low of this breaker to give me some room under that. And then we're going to target any of these highs. This high, that high. You want to go up there, go for the gusto, right? And then on October 23rd, did I say? Boom. Now we're in the trade. Now we're in the trade. Right. And we still probably will be in. The, you're still in this trade. Yes. Right. You will still be in this trade if that's your target up there. Right. But you got in that trade on that day. Right there. Now you got in that trade on October 23rd. All right, October 23rd, you got in that trade. Realistically, you know what I'm saying? You um, if you entered on the order block, your your stop loss would be below the order block. But that's your required. Let me let me address that. <clears throat> Proper stop placement, right? Oh, it's not on there. Oh, yeah, that's right. So proper stop placement, if you're entering on the order block, the minimum stop you should put should be at the low of the order block. A very aggressive stop can be around mean threshold, but I don't play like that. Below the low, this is the minimum stop that's required. The safe stop. It's always below the low of the price move. So if you want to go with the minimum stop, this trade you're looking at right now would be a five to one risk to reward, which you would still be in back to this high. All right. You still would be in it. It would be a five to one, a uh, 5.15 to one trade going from the low of the order block. And then the safe stop is at the swing low of the price leg. So you decide 
what's your risk to reward with the safe stop it's a two two point two to one risk to reward still a good trade two to one risk to reward and um at the low of the order block it's a um 5.2 to 1 risk to reward but that's proper stop management that's a that's just a gem a added gem of the live stream whenever you enter you always want to put your stop in relations to pd arrays that support the order flow you don't want to just do it at a fixed stop just because that's what my stop is if you only have a fixed stop that means you have to Hey man, my internet acting crazy, man. I'm sick of it. I'm about to go, man. I can't remember what I was saying, but I'm about to go. I um hey, this is my world. I appreciate you for joining. <laughs> but I'm pissed off right now, man. So the live stream done, man. I hopefully I was able to share something to help somebody. I'm mad now. <laughs> I'm mad now, so the live stream over, man. <laughs> like, do anybody <laughs> do anybody got any do anybody got anything before I go, man? Cause that that's it, man. Every time I try to start talking, it keep freezing up, man. It keep freezing up. The internet acting crazy, man. Do anybody got anything before I go? That, 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 was this helpful for anybody? I can't remember what I was saying, but was this helpful for anybody? Did did, did you know? Did I did I did I um did I accomplish the task of um talking about how to see the PD arrays in real time? Do anybody got anything? Feel free to um. I'll do this right here. I appreciate that. Um, I dropped the link in the chat. I don't know how much, I don't know how off it is. I don't know how off the time is right now since it's been, since the internet been acting crazy. So I, um, I'll give it a little bit of time, but I got the link in the chat. If anybody want to pull up and ask a question, if anybody want to drop something in the chat, I'll, um, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes. We're coming up on an hour right now. I appreciate y'all for hanging out. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody that said it was helpful. This was an idea that I had. Some, I can't remember who the person was. Somebody asked, somebody made a statement saying that it's hard for them to um see the PD rays in real time. Um <laughs> what's up larry <laughs> the last thing was fixed up oh yeah 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 that's what i was saying um you don't want to if you own if you got a fixed stop that you operate on you got a fixed stop that you operate on um you have to wait you have to get an entry where that's going to allow for your stop to be below or above 
a pedia rate that supports the narrative right so in the example i gave when i said um uh if you enter as soon as we hit the um order block right the required stop is at the low just below the low of, i never put it right on the tick i always go at least a point below on these intraday time frames when i go a point below monthly time frames a point below ain't gonna do you no good so you need to pick a good spot for being below on the monthly but on the monthly you'd be like hey this a monthly candle i'm putting it right at the low that that's cool but in intraday like on the on the um the um five minute hourly i'll be putting at least a point below the low if it's an hourly i might go two to five points below the low but um at the low of the order block is mandatory the safe is always below the swing low of the price leg this is the price leg right here so the safe is always below the swing low the mandatory is below the pedia the 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 last pedia rate i put like so the lowest pedia rate in the bear bullish the highest pedia rate in the um bearish so the last pedia rate so if you have an order block and then you got a fair value gap down here on the same time frame you got to account for that fair value gap you got to account for that fair value gap all right so and if you're Go to the date when we trade it back into it we trade it back into it on this day right here right so you see the low of the order block was safe we came down the low of the order block was safe um let's look at the body the body of the order block let's see if the mean threshold on this got a super long wick so we're gonna look at just the body of the mean threshold that got tapped All right that got tapped depending on how far below it was but the body mean threshold that got tapped unless you had like a a bigger one that's why i say i don't fool around that mean threshold i go to the low that mean threshold now if mean threshold is your entry then you didn't get an entry until february 27th right february 27th and the low of it was still safe right if mean threshold is your entry you didn't get an entry to the 27th okay which was the next day yeah no it wasn't the next day because we the order block let me go back and see. Yes, it was. Mm -mm. Oh, that's the. I'm like, what's that red? Hold up. Let me see when it was. Ah, why can't I move this? Why can't I move this? Okay, so now 41.89.25 was the entry. Then the mean threshold was 41.41. Well, 41.41 is the mean threshold that was on the 27th, and 41.89. Yes, that was the next day, right? So the entry, so it was just a day apart, right? And then the low was safe now when it come to let's just say let's see if we can find so 41 41 the low of this candle right here is 41 22. let's go in and see if, let's pretend like we super in tune with the algorithm and we're gonna go down let's go down this is a daily let's go down to a one hour chart so on a one hour chart right we're going here saying that we're super in tune with the algorithm come on man i dog it
cheese and rice. I can't drag anything around. Everything's just moving the dog on. Okay. So if you got a fix, we got a fix risk to reward. Right? We got a fix risk to reward. And we're looking at hourly. We see we came down and we took out this low. And then we went back up and we had us a breaking market structure right there. And now we entered on order block. So we're going to stick with order blocks. So now we got an order block right there. This is our order block because there's your, you know what I'm saying? Your um, your um expansion with displacement right there. So, and then what's this low right here? So the order block is at 4170. And we're gonna say you got a five, you got a a, a, a five point stop loss. You got a five point stop loss. So let's see. Can we get mean threshold on the whole candle? Can we get mean threshold on the so mean threshold is at 41 41 67 75. All right, so mean threshold is at 41.67.75, right? And remember when I said on the hourly candles, I'll go one. Sometime I'll go two to five points on the hourly candle, right? So 41.67.75, I mean 41.67.75, yes, is the mean threshold of the... um. Okay, the mean threshold is 4166.25, right? Mean threshold of this right here is 4166.25 of the body of the candle. We we stretching this to try to give an example, right? <laughs> so the mean threshold of the body of this is 4166.25, right? We're going to go one point below that. So 41. 65 25 is where our stop would need to be safe in our opinion here we got a five point stop loss so 41 65 25 66 67 68 69 70 25 is the highest we can get into this trade for our stop loss to fall where it needs to be safe the open price of the order block is 4170. So we can take that 4170 trade because that would put our stop loss at 4165 even. 4165 is below 416525. So we could take that trade off of that 4170 and our fixed 5 point stop loss would be below the PD array that we are saying if we break this i'm on the wrong side of the trade so we can take it at 4170 it puts our stop at 4165 even that's one point below the mean threshold of the order block so we can safely take that trade on the hourly time frame based off of a monthly based off of a monthly order block. This is the monthly order block we was doing it off of, and that's how we can take the trade safely on a one-hour time frame with a fixed stop loss. Whew. We was, we was reaching. We was reaching to find a good example on that one. <laughs> Shout out Larry again, the biggest bear in the building. You're welcome, Kenyon. Hey, um, that's all I got, man. I'm tapped out. I got I got nine minutes before I get off from work. I get off at eleven o'clock. 
I got nine minutes before I get off. I might as well stay for nine minutes. If anybody got anything, the link in the chat, got anything? If you ain't got nothing, I'm going to go ahead and call it. Thank you, Runda, for reminding me of what I was talking about before the internet act up and made me mad again. Now, let me get all this junk off my chart. Let me see what the price got going on since we've been on here. See what price got going on since we've been here. We took out Friday's low. I kind of figured we was gonna keep sliding when I was um when I was getting ready to take the boys, we were dropping. We had started dropping. I kind of figured we was gonna keep sliding, and we did. I didn't even I ain't really watched the price, but I just was like, we probably gonna slide down, take out that low because the way it was moving. Man, all we did was come down. Asian, we opened up, had a small new week opening gap to the downside. Pushed down to the low, that weekly imbalance that we had repriced. Um, did not retrace back up to that hourly fair value. We had two hourly fair value gaps right there. Retraced back in institutional order flow entry drill on the 7 p.m. Sibby. The um the 6 p.m. SEBI we did not go back to breakaway gap, traded back, got institutional order flow entry drill on the 7 p.m. SEBI. Um price continued to break down after midnight. We um just continued to break down, no real displacement or anything. We just kind of melted down um at London, just continued to sort of melt down, melt down, and then at eight o'clock. We start to move a little bit heavier, created a um, SIBI on the eight o'clock candle, didn't retrace back up to it. Look like we got a small SIBI right there on the nine o'clock candle, and we do very small. So we got back to back SIBIs again, same thing we did over here. Um, we did not come back into either one of those SIBIs on the hourly time frame, and right now we're still melting down on the. Um, hourly time frame still melting down uh, put it on regular trade analysis for a second okay 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 same low watching that low let's see what the four hour look like same low Watching that low, a lot of sell side up under here. Relative equal lows there on the four hour. A lot of sell side there. That daily fair value gap is down there. Been talking about that'll be a nice pullback. That'll be a nice pullback to get back down to that daily. I would love to see it, especially since I, I mean November just ripped straight up. Since October ripped straight, I mean, November ripped straight up. I would love to see price come back down to this daily fair value gap in December to give an opportunity <clears throat> to participate in this rally. Like we said before, um, it ain't been many opportunities to participate in this rally. Had a small little pullback here. But we haven't had any real opportunity to participate in this rally. And why do I say that would be nice to come? Because if we come from the expansion leg, come all the way up to the high, right? All the way up to the high, right? That's a daily um, imbalance in the discount. It's a bullish narrative. This is imbalance in the discount. That's a daily imbalance in the discount of this price leg right here right we never if you go look if you look from why am i using that low because if i come from when the price expanded to that high we never came back into a discount 
never came back into a discount on this piece of the price leg. We just continued up. Right. So if we go all the way up to the high, so from that low to that high, we never came back to the discount yet. So this right here is that price leg and that's the imbalance in the discount. That's why I was looking at that for those who you wonder like, hey, why are you looking at that PD array? Why are you looking at that PD array? It's all about the narrative. Matt Jr. Bullish, bullish global equity as GDP positive. Fed cuts, hikes, jobless claim, more government promising oil, petrol prices cut to collect votes. So crude oil would drop under 65 that make global markets bullish. And there it is from a fundamental standpoint. Me personally, that's too much reading and too much tracking. And too much keeping up, but that stuff is very important. Shout out people like, like uh, Charles, Charles, um, Uncle Chad, everybody call him Uncle Charles. He be into that information stuff. Shout out people like Wall Street Trapper, they be into that fundamental stuff. Shout out people like the homie Zay, Zay the Wealth Strategist that run the runners. He be into all that fundamental data stuff. Keeping up with like all the news and the, you know, that's too much for me. I'm too lazy for I just look at the price action. <laughs> I'm too love to. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm too lazy to keep up with all that fundamental stuff. But all that stuff is important. All the stuff he's saying right there, all that stuff, that stuff important, man. You know what I'm saying? But me, I just let them candles tell him, call them count everything he said down there. Right, those candles gonna use that news to come down there to that, or they're gonna use that news to take out them lows and then take back off. They're gonna use that news to go to the level that they want. And how do you know how to watch with the level? You don't get it right every time. I don't get it right every time, but stuff like displacement, stuff like This is all the stuff. This is everything. This is all the, 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 the stuff I need. Premium and discount, displacement, imbalance. That's all I look for. Okay. Displacement. How do we know? We got expansion with an imbalance. Displacement, discount of the move, premium of the move. What's that? That 50% line, anything above that, that's the premium of the move. Below that, that's the discount of the move. If I'm a seller, I want to sell in the premium. If I'm a buyer, I want to buy in a discount. If the book narrative is bullish, I want to be a buyer. If the narrative is bearish, I want to be a seller. Where do I want to sell? In the premium? Where do I want to buy? In the discount? When the news come out, global GDP positive. Bang on! We're in a premium. I want to buy. I'm not buying. Job hikes went up too much. Drop. Win a discount. I want to buy. Buy. I just, I just read the counts. But remember, that fundamental stuff is important. If you got the, if you got the patience and and all that to, to, to stick to it, read up on that stuff. It helps you. Hey man, it's eleven o'clock. Time for me to get off. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me, man. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to hang out here with me. Do me a favor. Like the video. Share the video. The algorithm tells me I need to start saying that stuff. So I'm saying it. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. For the Black Spider and the Gold members, remember tonight at 7 p.m., we will be doing the Q&A. Pull up with your hard-hitting questions. Yep. Yep. You way back there in the back. The one that's always quiet. Here to learn and share. Deborah. Lil Hawk. Lil Hawk be chatty chat chat. And I ain't gonna do Lil Hawk like that. Lovern. FC. Yep. I'm calling you by name. Valdez. All I'm calling your name. By name. Pull up with your hard-hitting questions.
tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. Everybody else, until the next time, I feel like getting on Al Gore's internet and running my mouth. Hit has been your boy, Aranya Grande, a.k.a. Big Spider. Gone.